Hey guys, this is Dr. Bertola Mashko, the medical futurist. As the medical futurist, my job is to highlight a few trends that simply stand out of the dense hype crowd in digital health and artificial intelligence. And every, at the beginning of every single year, I come up with a few medical innovations I find to be a bit more exciting or more important for the year ahead. So maybe this way, knowing that list, we can better prepare for what's coming next. Here are the top seven medical innovations for 2023. Number one, asynchronous telemedicine. Asynchronous telemedicine is quite a new term and it refers to consultations that are not taking place live. There is no in-person contact, there is no live consultation remotely, but you send information, data, medical records for analysis and someone from afar will reply to you later. There is no live communication. A lot of things from texting to email messaging services, remote care platforms, skin checking apps, all these belong to this category. So I think asynchronous telemedicine will have a booming year in 2023 because of major and global doctor shortages. It's going to be, I think, more and more impossible to be able to provide remote care services live. But if you can share data and expect to receive diagnosis, insights, treatment or monitoring from afar after some sort of a time delay, that's good enough, not in emergency situations, of course, for ma managing a huge range of medical conditions. Number two, ambient and emotion AI. Ambient technologies refer to technologies that do not disrupt your attention. You go into a room and the lights come out with the color that you prefer personally. Something that doesn't disrupt your way of living, your way of working, your way of thinking. At the same time, Emotion AI re refers to artificial intelligence-based conversation engines that make you feel like they can sort of uh, transfer emotions towards you, show some kind of empathy or compassion. Combine the two technologies sounds very exciting to me. It means that we could use finally digital health devices, maybe AI-based chatbots, that would make us feel like we are being cared for, there is emotion involved, but it's still an ambient technology. It won't disrupt how we manage our lifestyle or how we make our medical decisions. Number three, skin patches measuring vital signs and health parameters. A lot of skin patches have come to the market in the last couple of years that instead of just wearing a smartwatch or a, a ring, a wearable bracelet, something like that, instead of that, just having a skin patch on your skin would still allow technology to measure important data about your health or disease management. I tested a blood pressure skin patch in 2022, and I expect to test a lot of blood glucose measuring devices, wireless ones, in 2023. So I think it's time, finally, for skin patches to come to the market, so we patients don't have to deal with huge, bulky devices measuring basic vital signs and health parameters. Number four, affordable vein scanners. Vein scanners have been coming to the market for many years, but they have been so expensive. Vein scanners are handheld devices with which you can just look at someone's skin and you see the veins running below it. So before taking a blood sample, you can see actually which vein to choose. It would help healthcare professionals, phlebotomists to make sure that they make no mistakes while taking blood samples. One department could share one device and it could help all the healthcare practitioners in that department to allow such mistakes during taking blood samples. But for that, these devices have to be as affordable as possible. And now I think there is a sign, there is a reason to believe that these affordable vein scanners will reach the market and finally all these phlebotomists can enjoy their jobs, making no mistakes ever again. Number five, synthetic medical records. I always say that artificial intelligence is only as good as the data we feed it with. So if we don't have enough medical records of patients, if we cannot share enough quality and quantity data with these AI-based systems, we simply cannot develop them to a certain level where we could start using them in practice. One solution could be accessing more information and private data from patients, but that's not the, the case right now. Another solution could be creating synthetic medical records. And there is an exciting method called GANs, Generative Adversarial Networks, which allow uh, AI developers to create 
synthetic medical data. Data that could be used in studies, in clinical trials, to further develop the efficiency of artificial intelligence-based medical technologies. So synthetic medical records through these GAN-based uh, projects will flood the market in 2023. Number six, blood draw devices being used in clinical trials. Normally, during clinical trials, from time to time, patients have to go to a physical location to the point of care and get their blood samples taken or get some other vital signs and health parameters measured and obtained by healthcare professionals. But what if we could give technologies to patients to provide the same quality of data and information even when they are at their homes? Such blood draw devices like the TESO device would allow that vision to become a reality. Now that such devices have been used in many clinical trials, it's easy to expect patients in 2023 to start being able to get engaged with their trials, being able to obtain not just data through digital health technologies, but also even blood samples through these easy to use, efficient and safe devices. And number seven, smart TVs being used for remote care. I know it doesn't sound exciting at first because all of us have smart TVs at home, but what if those smart TVs with functions about sharing audio or video recordings could be used as a remote care platform to conduct and to perform and receive remote care consultations. There have been many pilots throughout the world showing that LG and Samsung TVs could be used for that. Patients staying at their homes, having live consultations through their TVs while healthcare professionals are at the point of care. But also there have been pilots about how sitting in one hub in a healthcare department, one nurse or healthcare professional could monitor, even more, provide insights for patients who are in their respectable patient rooms using these smart TVs. So in 2023, besides smartphones, smart TVs will also become remote care platforms. I know it's a subjective list, but these are the trends I find to be the most exciting, the most important going into 2023. In the meantime, at, on, the, on the range of the Medical Futurist channels, we will keep on informing you about all the breakthroughs, studies, the exciting things happening in digital health and artificial intelligence. So see you on all these channels for the entire year. If you like this video, please subscribe below. So you will get notified about all the videos we come up with. Plus, please check out the digitalhealthcourse.com, the platform where you can learn all the things around digital health and the future of healthcare.